so it is 5.03 and I'm gonna call to order the um, Deerfield Finance Committee meeting. Um, and we're actually gonna start by letting the um, sign have a quick few minutes. Oh, sure. Or uh, let's see, actually, are we having a meeting, Carolyn? Yes, I'd like to call this Board of Selectmen's meeting to order. Um, I do not believe that Dave is here. Um, right. the, Julie was very gracious to allow me a couple minutes just to um, ask that I'm, I make a motion to uh, support the letter. Uh, Casey, what is the actual wording of the letter? Um, it's a community. You're still muted. Is it the State Historical Records and Board Advisory Board grant for Veterans no. Database and no. online? No, no, this is for 65. What is it now? Total 65 million. 65 million. million. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're, we're asking for 65 million from the community. What is it? I can go get a copy of it. All right. All right, I don't I don't have it in front of me. Casey just sent it about three minutes ago. I can try to get it up on my other computer. Um, it, sorry about that. Actually, while you're doing that, why don't we go ahead and approve the minutes from the last finance committee meeting and then we'll go back to your letter as soon as we're done with that. I'm sorry, Casey just finished it, yes. No worries. Um, I'll make a motion that we move the minutes of March 30th. That's Jeff Upton. Second, John Pachorek. Any discussion? No. Um, okay, roll call vote. I haven't written everybody's name down yet. John Pachorek. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Skip Olmstead. You're muted, Skip. All right, Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant, aye. Allison Vanderbilt. Aye. Okay. John Toreski, aye. I'm Tereski, I'm sorry. And you got me in there finally. I voted aye. It's unanimous now. <laughs> okay. All um, right. Thank you, Julie. Back to the select board. Yes. Um, I make a motion for um, uh, the select board to send a letter to um, Jim McGovern, our representative, for the directed community project funding opportunity program. We have approximately $65 million worth of projects, the wastewater sewer uh, infrastructure and plant upgrades, including piping, and $5 million for the regional um, senior center um, request. So, oh, no, I guess we did it at $6 million. Okay, yeah. so um, Trevor, so, do you second yes, that? I would second that for sure. And to explain any further if anybody has any questions on the sewer. Okay, um, hearing no more discussion. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Casey, thank you very much. Can you please get that out this evening? Thank you, Julie. I really appreciate you doing that. No problem. You said two minutes. I think you got it in, in time. Um, <laughs> couple of administrative things before we really get going. Um, there is a capital public hearing on the 13th, which is a week from tomorrow. Um, we are all invited. I will post it as a finance committee meeting just in case we end up with a quorum in the meeting and want to discuss anything. Um, it will essentially be what was presented to us last week. Um, 
So if you're interested in the public hearing aspect of it and what everybody in town has to say about it, um, we should go. Otherwise, we've already heard the, the meat of what will be presented in that. Um, the other- that's, that's on the 13th, Julie? 13th. So, so that would be next week on Tuesday night, right? Oh, is it on Tuesday? I'm sorry. So it's a week from today. Yes. Thank you. All right. Um, and then the second thing I have written down is I got an email from Candace saying that the library will be presenting their um, capital plan to the select board on April 21st. That's still. That's yeah, we, we wanted um, an update. Um, we haven't heard from them lately, Julie, so that was why we asked them to come. Okay, and she has invited the finance committee. So again, if we would like to go and get an update from the library on the um, plans and status and whatever of the, the um, library capital um, program, that will be on April 21st during the select board meeting. Um, Third thing I wanted to say, I'm sorry, I have a bunch of admin notes. Um, last week, I, I squashed discussion at one point during the meeting, and I did not mean to squash discussion about the budget. It was only if we start straying off into things that aren't really related to budget that I will hopefully bring us back and, and redirect us. So if I ever say something that you feel like is squashing discussion on the budget, always before we vote, we say any further discussion, say, yeah, there's further discussion and keep discussing, okay? Because there's no intention of squashing discussion about the budget at any time. And I apologize if I conveyed that at any point. Um, and the other piece of that is I've talked to a couple people in, independently over the past week, and we would like to look at the salary schedule a little bit. Personal question. So we got sent an email, a salary schedule two weeks back, and um, Don, go ahead. Could I speak to the issue? Yeah, that'd be great. First of all, uh, when we were talking last week, the thing I was trying to work into was work into a discussion of this salary and compensation schedule. However, we never got there. Since then, I've talked to Casey Warren, our town administrator, and I was advised that currently they are working between the Board of Selectmen and the Personnel Committee, and they're working on this issue already. So it'd be kind of mute for me to bring it up because they're already doing it. So what I'd like to do is if uh, Casey's available and she could talk to it for a couple of minutes, maybe she could bring us up to date exactly where we stand on that process. Thank you. Can't hear you. Yeah. It looks like you're unmuted, but we can't hear you. Technical difficulties. <laughs> Still can't hear you. Um, we, uh, we, while she's trying to speak, we are, we are, I could just mention that we are, um, we have, are working on a compensation schedule at the moment, um, a comp schedule, and we're hoping to have some information, I think by the 26th, um, because it, I think all of us have wanted to kind of look at our schedule and say, is it, how does it compare to other towns? Do, it, does it, is it accurate? Is it, you know, too, are the steps too big or, you know, how do we, we always ha seem to be having trouble. I think in my last several years of hiring people in, we're always feeling like we have to put them further up than we really wanted to. And nope. it's a 10 step. Oh, there you are. We can hear you now. Okay. Hey, okay. I'll let you take over Casey. I was just filling dead air. <laughs> Can you hear us? Yes, yeah. finally. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. My it's computer okay. is just not being nice to me today. Okay, so speaking to what Jack just mentioned, he did call me and I put a brief 
paragraph in my memo about compensation, but the upshot of the conversation with Jack was, yes, the select board at the request of the personnel board started a compensation classification study last fall. We've completed probably two thirds of it. We're still waiting for a little bit of information, but the indicators of the compensation study will be presented um, I'm hoping in two weeks. That, that's the goal for the consultant and I, to review it in two weeks and be able to present it to personnel board and hopefully the select board at the end of the month. What we asked at the beginning of the budget season, because the salary study wasn't complete, department heads were asked to compute pay rates based on the current plan with a step increase for employees that were not at step two. COLA has not been addressed because if the salary schedule, the new class, the new compensation schedule mitigates certain circumstances, it could precipitate a change. At this point, one thing that Brenda and I were concerned about was COLA. We, we might not be able to afford COLA. Mm. So I have to have an offline conversation with Brenda because something came up at the personnel board meeting that I need to ask you about but I didn't want to interrupt today because I knew I was going to see you tonight. So we can talk about that. But essentially we're in the middle of a study. So we asked people to keep things copacetic until we had more information. So do you feel like this is going to change any of the budgets that have been presented to us? Because we've definitely gone through some that have personnel costs in this. I know. I have to talk to Brenda first. <laughs> Basically, weigh how how big the baseball bat's going to be, but <laughs> but what I don't know is if it's so. The, so the question I had for the consultant last night was, if it's cheaper to completely transition, it would save the town money to make the transition this year rather than wait another year or even half a year. It might make sense to recompute those, but it really depends on whether it's affordable. And so we know what we don't have. We have a substantially complete budget responses from the schools, although the hearing for DES is next week. So I really need to see what she comes back with for a draft compensation schedule to be able to answer that and, and wait for the baseball bat from Brenda. <laughs> Could I interject uh, for a minute here, Julie? Okay. Uh, I, I guess I've been on the personnel committee and got off a year or so ago. And we had talked about having a, the study done. I believe it's the study that you're doing now. And it's one that I certainly agree with. The problem that we have, and it's a problem that's come up in the past, is we truly need to have a salary schedule in place for the coming year by the end of December. It's just, and for whatever reason, not to have that done is a problem. And I, and I certainly understand that we also need that compensation study. But if that's not done by the end of December, then we need to come up with a salary schedule. We should have come up with a salary schedule. I had made the assumption that we had one until part of the discussion last week sort of indicated that there wasn't one, and I was not aware of that. Now, that's a problem, and I, and I don't know why we couldn't have come up with, or the personnel committee couldn't have been asked to put together a compensation schedule, as we've done the past couple of years, and have it available, do the compensation study, and if it can't be put into place two months ago, then we'll do it next year. That's all I've got to say. No, you can't say anything, Trevor. <laughs> um, I, I think we, so, and I could be, I could be wrong about this, but I thought, um, you know, I, I always look, you know, early on in the year as we get to fall, you know, what a coal is looking like and, they were, I think, 0.4 early on in October. And then I think they finally wound up the year at 1.4 for the New England kind of matrix um, at, for, for COLA. And so, uh, 
And I know every year we kind of float along and not knowing if we're going to be able to do or what we're going to be able to do for COLA. But um, and I knew the budget was going to be tight this year, so I wasn't sure we were going to be able to do a COLA this year. Um, I, I did expect um, that our that our salary schedule was going to be the same schedule we've been rolling on for the last several years, which would be you know the same same kind of chart we have where everybody kind of takes a step. So um, I was just under the impression that we were still rolling along with the, with the salary schedule we had and that um, we were going to decide whether we were going to have any money to do any COLAs at all. So I, I just assumed everyone was going to do a step. And, and I think that's what was budgeted for everybody's budget without a COLA. Everybody was going to take their steps unless they were step 10. And uh, so, it, it, yeah. That was what was indicated that. in the memo. So yeah. I don't understand why Skip's saying we don't have a salary schedule. Well, we well, unless it's didn't up, call it 22. Right. Uh, we probably should but have. we computed pay rates based on the current plan with a step increase for employees, not at step 10. Uh, and no that's fine. I didn't see that anywhere, or I didn't realize that was that a recommendation that the personnel board made to the board of selectmen? It was voted at the town meeting. And Last June. No, what to, we, we have a salary schedule for the current year. Right. And typically what has happened or has been that the personnel board brings to the board of selectmen as early as possible. And last year we actually got it done, I believe in November. We brought the salary schedule forward to the board of selectmen for the current fiscal year that we're in now. And that's really the way we need to do this. It's not fair to ask department heads to budget if they don't have the salary schedule in front of them. But they have it. Well, it's the same one that, it's the same one that was in place a year it ago. It's the same one from FY21 with one step increase, Skip. I don't understand how that's right. not including. The only difference is that there was no COLA voted like there was the last two years. Was that, I don't remember anybody indicating to the finance committee or to anyone else that we were going to use the prior year salary schedule that there would be no COLA. Yeah, that's accurate. It was in the budget memo, Skip, which was sent out to all the committees. And the uh, the, pers the personnel board made that recommendation to the to the board of selectmen. The personnel board yes, no. was discussing the classification compensation plan and several job descriptions. And when I discussed it with them, they did not say, "Casey, go do this." We discussed it, and then Brenda and I discussed. It. So what are you telling me? So we're using last year's. Uh, we're using I mean, the, the question was, did the personnel committee do their job and vote a salary schedule? And if it was the same as last year's, that's fine. But no. did they do that? It was not voted by the personnel board. If that is Thank what you. you're asking. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, that wasn't done. And that is supposed to be done. They indicated to me after discussion FY21's schedule with a step increase and in COLA to be determined later, depending on what we got back for the compensation evaluation. And that makes budgeting next to impossible. Actually, it's not next to impossible. Add a step, do a calculation. That's exactly what Brenda did. Comment? Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, just, just very quickly, and Jack brought up this point last week in our conversation about this and hopefully everybody remembers that majority of the seniors in in Deerfield are receiving a COLA and usually that 
uh, Social Security COLA is pretty small. And uh, when we talk about salary schedule for town employees, whether they be teachers or whatever, uh, we have to remember that that their their raises are based on two parts, one being a step increase, an automatic step increase for every year that they're employed, and then a coal on top of it. So when we hear uh, a percentage of, well, it's 2% increase, well, that's not really true. That's only part of the increase. And I just want to re remind people that uh, as, as things go, and I realize everybody deserves a raise if they're doing their job, and I have no problem with that, but I just hope that people are paying attention to what's happening with the salary schedule. I brought this up two, three years ago, uh, and I was not the only one. God rest his soul, Bruce Hunter and myself were concerned about some of the big increases we were seeing now. And uh, I just hope people remember that going forward here, that do we need to, uh, you know, look at that salary schedule and, and adjust in that? Probably you need to review it, you know, on a regular basis. But let's keep in mind that taxpayers are supporting that. And I know town employees are taxpayers, but you also have a lot of seniors that are getting simply a COLA in that SIP, their increase in pay. And sometimes that's a pretty small dollar amount. I'm done. Thank you. So that salary schedule also only applies to people who are not covered by a contract, by a union contract. So it doesn't cover any of the teachers, right? And it also... Right. Also have but the teachers... Police. teachers Please do. Yep. And, right. the highway, and the highway department. Comment and very quickly. Unionized. Very quickly. The, the teacher's contract is, is, is basically the leader of the town employees' contracts. What happens, what happens at the teacher's contract usually carries over into the town employees, and that's how you created, that's how these schedules got created to start off with, with the step increases plus the polas on top of it. So I know there are separate entities, but the the format being used is pretty much the same format. There's approximately there's 24 employees that are not union plus scams. So that's we're not talking about a whole lot of people here. And of those 24, some are part time. So, I mean, that doesn't include sewer, but that's an enterprise fund. So we're not talking that many employees. That are not right. contracts. John, right. John, I, I do understand that and I respect that. Uh, but uh, over my career, I, I know that uh, with, with negotiations and contracts, whether it be a small group, large group, whatever, it's kind of like a vicious cycle. What one, especially when you're in, a, in town, what one, one area gets, the next area sees that, the, the next department sees that, and they want the same or very similar to it. So it goes round and round and round, and uh, that's that's how that's how the unions work, and they they do it quite well, to be honest with you. And whether you're non-union or union, your non-unions are going to follow what your unions are doing. So I, all I'm saying is, I would just like to see the town and whoever's presenting, whoever's negotiating, just be aware that you have seniors in town. Uh, you know, some of them have money, but some of them don't. And with their COLA, it's hard for them to keep up with their taxes. That's all. So that's exactly what's been identified throughout the compensation study process. 
is our, our lower rates, and this is anecdotal because I don't have the study in front of me to show you, but the lowest three steps are well below market. Dropping those off and spreading the, great, the steps in a lower percentage across different number of years would probably help make the compensation plan more sustainable for a longer period of time. There are also policy decisions that need to be made, and Mary discussed this last night, about awarding COLA within steps, about possibly longevity could be low, but again, I don't have that data in front of me to point to it. It's something that she mentioned in a previous meeting. So these are the things that are actually being addressed for those reasons, Jeff, because you see it in the comparisons. But without it being in front of me, it's very hard for me to draw your attention to any specific thing. So when that report is available and substantially complete, you will receive it. Good, thank you. <laughs> any, um, anybody else have any comments on the compensation plan before we move on to the budget review? I'm not seeing any, so. Brenda, do you have something you wanna show us or should we just move into um, Casey's list of budgets? I am not gonna be able to share my screen because I've got my screen on another computer, but um, all of you have Casey's memo in front of you. Okay. I, I think the only thing that's left off is probably the, the very first budget that should be on there is the select board staff salaries. Since that one hasn't been voted yet, um, Casey, I know you had it on there originally, but um, it came off. So we should we should probably address that one first. And that one is 122-5110. And the amount is 226,461. That does represent a 3.21% increase. Um, it's just a step increase for the two uh, assistants in Casey's office. And then her contract uh, gives her a 2% increase. I think one employee has a longevity as well, right, Brenda? That's correct. And her longevity has increased. I'm sorry, I wouldn't have taken it off. I thought we had already voted it. Yeah, it was the select board salaries that we had voted. Um, I think when you and I talked yesterday, we just misunderstood each other. Yeah, okay. When did that memo go out? Pardon? When did that memo go out? I don't believe I received it. What memo? The budget memo went to the department heads and the committee chairs. Oh, I thought you were talking about a recent email. Okay, sorry. No, no, that would have been December. Back in December. Yeah. Make a motion okay. we accept the select board staff salaries number 112510 at 226461. Second by John Pereski. All right, so we have moved and seconded the select board staff salaries 122510 for 226461. Any discussion? I tried, but I'm not going to make any comment. We got your usual comment, right? <laughs> oh no, this is the staff salary. It's a select board salary you always comment on. Any other discussion? Have a sense of humor. <laughs> All right, um, roll call vote. Jim Cambius. Aye. John Paterk. Cambius, aye. Uh, John Paterk. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Skip Olmstead? Aye. Don Pereski? Aye. Julie Chalfin? Aye. Allison Vandervelden? Aye. Passes 700. Um, okay. Skip, next were you asking about that memo that I was just sharing a minute ago? Is that what you were asking about? 
I don't know. We have Brenda talked about a memo that went out. I assumed it was an email. You can disregard it. Oh, there you go. Memo right here. Thank you, thank you, Julie. So from here on, we can we can follow this. Um, so the next budget is 122-5400 for select board and admin expense for 13,100. Select board received a request from or to match a state historical records grant for to create a veterans database and online access system from Chris Harris a few weeks ago. And the board thought that was, when we discussed it, the board wanted to support it and asked me to find a place to put, to put a match in. So after some discussion with Brenda, we decided it best fit into the select board budget. So this would be an item that we wouldn't normally handle, but this board feels that this project would be very helpful for ongoing veterans business, just to even collate the veterans we have, where their graves are located, that sort of thing. And I did include in attachment A, there's a brief discussion, a brief description of the project and a brief breakdown. You know what, Julie, give me a second and I will see if I can. Let me see if I can pull my packet down and I can share screen and okay. go through it. Because I don't more. think I ended up with attachment A. There's I will fix that. All right, do we have a motion? I'll move. Second. I'll second, Jeff. Okay, so we have moved and seconded for select board administrator events, 120 expense, 122,500 at 13,100. Um, and then when Casey brings up her description of the veterans thing, we can look at that. Any other discussion? John Presky, go ahead. Uh, we've passed a few years. We've consistently over budgeted. And so far through January, we've only spent a little less than 3,700 of the 11,150 we budgeted. Um, if we're trying to save the seniors some money, maybe we can do a little bit here. Reduce what we're budgeting. I, I think, John, I'll, I'll speak for Casey and then she can add on to this. The reason we haven't spent so much this year or last year was because both of the MMA conferences were virtual. Um, we can only assume that those will be in person again at some point in time and then the expenses will be higher. Um, she also has an additional uh, person in the office, her assistant, uh, Jennifer, who is intending to go in the future. So I, and, and I know that she has additional money in there for training that the both of them need. Uh, Casey is our um, purchase uh, procurement officer and she has to go through regular training. So um, Casey, I'll let you continue from there, but those are the things I was thinking of. That's essentially the highlights, Brenda. Hold on. I'm working on two computers, so it's making it kind of hard for me. Um, so those are essentially the two items. We actually made a couple reductions in some other areas of this budget, but once the grant match was added, it identifies, if you notice, it says 1950. So the grant match was 2000. We had actually made adjustments within the budget, so we didn't go up. But once the board indicated that they wanted to support the veterans database project, it did push that budget up. So we were trying to be conservative by actually moving things around as opposed to increasing the budget, but there are training requirements that we have to maintain. And I have to say um, the MMA conferences are always worthwhile. Um, we, I mean, I myself have always gone and uh, worked really hard, Trevor, has, you know, since he's been on the board, we connect with people and try to sort out things um, to have impact on the town. 
one of the things that we did not last year, but the year before was connect with the Department of Revenue person so that we could get the waiver for um, you know, the new um, uh, educational um, you know, chapter 70 finance, which is a $300,000, at least $300,000 impact on the town, negative impact that we would get less aid. So we are in, you know, in the process of getting a waiver, hopefully for that. So to say it's not worth going to the conferences is, as John Bedford has known over the years, um, you know, if you really do go and work, which we do, um, you know, we we bring we don't bring back as much money as we used to bring bring back, but we actually connect and network and and make trying to make savings for the town versus. Initially, at the beginning of the year, when I was a select board, we used to bring back money, but you know, money's harder to get nowadays. I'm not. I'm not questioning. But we're. It just seems we're over budgeting. It'd be interesting to see. I want to move on because we have bigger fish to fry. Probably, if anybody else agrees with with me, we can discuss it. Otherwise, I'm willing to drop the subject. Uh, we dropped a subject that I think we're over budgeting. It seemed consistently over budgeted. Like every year it's a several thousand under. Um, would this grant match for the veterans database be a candidate for CPA funding since it's a historical? No. We, uh, Chris Harris already reached out and I think had that conversation with CPC. So basically this veterans database and online access project would give us would give us the ability to create electronic databases with information so that when we are doing veterans work, because Memorial Day, we often go out and it's volunteers that do this, go out and they put flags out. And so this would help us quantify where things are and keep a running record of where, of who people are and where the the graves are located. So the select board did a support letter and the total funding is 17,875. The town would have to match, provide a cash match of $2,000. And then the grant would cover various options. So this, these are the funding sources. Is that enough ex explanation? I have a question, Jeff Upton. Question, I if I may. Who is going to oversee the database? This is actually going to be a combination, I think, and I think because I will. I I didn't get involved in the impetus of this. John Sis is involved as right. well as Harris, and I think they're managing the data flow because I think John. SIS has connections with, with the veterans' names, where they're located, but he's coordinating with Chris Harris. Chris Harris has done, I think more than, I, I know of one project, but more than one project related to the cemeteries that I think that's how they connected the dots with this particular application source. Okay, that's good to know. They've, they've done a great job in the past. That was my impression from what John said and Chris. Independent conversations though. Any further discussion on this? 90, 90, 90. <laughs> All right, roll call vote. Um, Jim Cambius. Cambius, aye. John Paterk. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. John Pareski. Jeff Stain. Uh, Julie Chalfin, aye. Allison Vanderbilt. Aye. All right, that passes 601. <coughs> What's next? All right, the next budget, I believe, is 151 5300, and that's legal expenses. Yeah, the total amount of that is 74,000. I think I heard a motion from John Paterk. A second. 
What one are we looking at? I'm sorry. Legal expenses 151 5300. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All right, Allison, second. Um, this has gone up a lot. And you want to start off, Casey, with a discussion? Yes, I will explain it. So the town's monthly service fees for the past three years have included three elements, employment or labor, land use, and a monthly essentially what acts like a, it acts like a retainer so it's a monthly fee that we pay for any legal questions that fall outside the auspices of the, those two other categories so if i have a question about a road status is it what happens if a road's discontinued and somebody wants to build a house that's a question that i don't have to pay a per hour rate for so in after speaking to town council, I was advised because again, I don't have all the, the last three or four years of information. This was not in place when I worked here before. So after looking at the breakdown, it would appear that under our current plan, we're paying $143.26 per hour to equal that monthly fee of $3,833. So that has not increased for three years. We still have the benefit of that legal advice pretty much whenever we need it, but the fee hasn't increased. Now, the normal fee for legal services that I'm aware of, and I pulled three of the town administrators I know that use different services, um, Koppelman and Page and KP Law, they're now two different law firms. Both, their base rate is 200 dollars an hour. Sometimes a partner will cost upwards of 250 to 400 depending on the task. Um, Donna McNichols firm out of Greenfield, she charges a straight 200 bucks an hour unless it's specific, a very specific thing. And she's got about 36 clients. Um, Koppelman and Page, which is the offshoot from KP Law, they charge around 200 and there's an upcharge for partners as well. So essentially what I did was I asked Jennifer to go through some of these, some of these bills that we had to evaluate on an intermittent basis. We just picked different bills to evaluate what we would have been spending if we were paying 200 bucks an hour based on the hours that were actually identified in the monthly bill. And so if you look at this basic breakdown that she did in the warrant, in the bill for monthly services in tw warrant number 20, item 25, we had 39.2 hours. If we had paid 200 bucks an hour, that would have been $7,840. We actually paid $3,833. So what the what I was trying to do is give people an idea of what the comparison per hour for these tasks would be at the average rate of $200 an hour. Um, so after I talked to Lisa, because they haven't had an increase in this particular particular sorry fee structure in three years, they're increasing from what amounts to $143 and $26 an hour to $170 per hour, which is still below the $200 per hour. That is our average, that what I, is what I'm told is the average rate and my experience has been that. So I wanted people to see what that difference was. And if you look at the bills, one of the things that Jeff Upton had said to me last year, now COVID interrupted my ability to go over this directly with him. But one of the things that he brought to my attention last year was he was never able to see the legal bills to see what it was we were paying for. So what I also had Jennifer do was scan the bills that she evaluated. And I added one extra bill for each category. So in attachment B, you see, sorry, 
In attachment B, you see first the, the comparison. And then if you start to go through, you'll see, for instance, this most recent bill that we received, it, if you look through, you'll see items. And there's no, there's a zero rate because it all fits into that monthly bill. But if I were to show you, and it's, if I, I would scroll down a little bit further to show you, but so as you go through these, you'll see different, different items, a different size bill and different total hours. And what that relates to is how much activity there, there is per month. If you compare and hold your breath while I skip, while I scroll pretty quickly here, I wanted to show you a comparison of what a monthly bill looks like versus attachment C, which shows you an individual bill for, for instance, a particular thing. So as everybody knows, the highway department has formalized, has organized as a union. So there's a lot of prep work related to that. And over a period of time, the bills have fluctuated. And this is strictly employment law. So there are two general lawyers that handle that. In this case, you see a bill referencing Kate Federoff. But you'll see a cost there and you'll see the rate is actually $200 per hour. And the total hours, uh, the total hours equal to my, times that rate equal, what is it, 900? 900. Yes. So as you go through and look at the difference between the activity from certain months to other months, in this case, this is a land use bill related to Attorney Costa's work for certain issues, I think related to Dollar General. So there's a period, there's an amount of time at a rate of $200 per hour. It's $260 in this bill. But further down, you start to see things increase a bit. And we're seeing that fluctuation as different activities are com being completed. And I've noticed, and it's actually towards the end of this. I know it's very dis disconcerting to see me scroll, I'm sorry, but it's a lot of information, but I wanted to make sure everybody had something they could look at. So for instance, this newest bill for employment law activities is $780. Whereas you would have a different one. This is also labor. It's $3,400. So it fluctuates. And we have another one. This is the most recent one related to land use. And it goes to two pages and is $1,600, which is quite a difference from the last bill I mentioned. So there's, there's a fluctuation. I wanted people to get a flavor of what that looked like because ultimately this type of monthly fee structure is very unique. Most firms do not offer it. I think at least one of my select board members would say after last night's planning board meeting that it's very useful to be able to have one of our partner attorneys assist committees making <coughs> with the processes that they're following in order to provide services to residents and other interested parties who put applications in. This is something that increasingly we see an uptick in, in terms of cost. On the other hand, I think at $170 an hour, we're getting a pretty good deal for the monthly fee structure. And the other structures, the other disciplines, labor and land use, that's going to fluctuate based on activity, which I think you guys had already discussed last year in my, my first iteration of new, a new budget process with you all. I just want to add, it's very helpful for select board members um, and other committee members to be able to call the lawyers under the monthly fee and um, let clarification in between meetings. Um, and not necessarily have to call a meeting. And that way, you know, individually we can talk to them. And I, I think that's pretty important. Is there a limit on how much you can ask? Typically it goes through me and I haven't run into a limit. Sometimes if it's, if it's something that, that's a land use thing, 
that is determined to be a land use thing, then it would turn into a question for Adam, for instance, as opposed to through the monthly system, if it's a very specific thing. I, I If you notice, Dollar General is a very specific item that appears on multiple bills. Um, Presky, you had a question? Yes, the uh, financial statement through February has uh, the original appropriation of 55,000 plus an additional 25,000. I don't know where that came in from. I don't know if that was uh, from a reserve transfer or what, but- We voted that, that was some meeting. Yeah, special town so meeting. It's really, 80, it's really 80,000, which is $6,666 a month. Not, not the uh, 30, 800 what do you have i don't have in front of me right the three thousand right. something you're talking about how does that compare to what jennifer did it actually that twenty five thousand is what it's an estimate of what activity we can expect for labor and land use because there's litigation and contract negotiations for the new union that are going to be ongoing so that's outside the monthly retainer then? Yes, it's outside the monthly okay. monthly retainer. If you look at your budget book, you'll see there's two separate items on that page. Land use. Right, okay. Jeff, you Thank had a you. question, didn't you? I thought I saw your Yeah, answer. so I, I have a right. Yeah, so I have I have a quick question and, and thank you for providing this information because it, it does shed some light. There's no question about it as far as being able to fall, help fall this. But a very quick question, as far as travel expenses and lodging, is that included or where does that fall? You know, I actually haven't had that answer from Lisa. I think they charge us when they come to town meeting. And it's funny with the changes in remote participation, um, if they have to, I shouldn't, let me rephrase that. They charge us when they come to physical meeting. With the changes that include remote participation, some of those charges have dropped. And in fact, Lisa said that to me when we discussed this last December, because I had reached out in December, knowing that particularly Jeff was gonna have questions about it. I, so my understanding is when they have to travel, they charge us a fee. It's not usually lodging, but it's usually the travel fee to actually drive out and they only charge it when they have to come out. Jay Tallerman, I don't remember how much Jay charged us when he came out to special town meeting in October. I could look it up, but I don't remember off the top of my head. And does that okay, get charged so against that's, that's, the plan? Yeah, that's in addition then. It's in addition to the monthly amount. Okay, thank you. Jack, you had a question too, didn't you? Yes, I do. Uh, is there any way you can break down the thing into the major categories, like, for example, uh, contract negotiations for police, contract negotiations for the highway garage, land uh, um, use, uh, or court appearances or something? Can you can you break that down? Like, for example, if we got a fifty thousand dollar thing, how much are we spending in each category, roughly, or can't you do it? The way that we bill with the monthly, it's harder to do. We would actually have to parse through it. I would have to have Pat go through and parse through. I don't want to do item. that. It's, I, I, I just want to know if you had a feel for it. That's all. At this point, I don't. But keep in mind, I've only been here a year. I haven't seen all the iterations of what's happening for labor and land use. I have a feel for what the bills are fluctuating at. But... No. The, the for purposes of the monthly bill, it can be any question. Sometimes we actually don't get charged for a land use question. I noticed there was a couple and I didn't, I don't think I pulled the bills, but I noticed there were a couple of bills that Lisa and Adam had made, had given us opinions or discussed with us, but they didn't actually charge to the land use. So I mentally went like that, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's general questions. If I ask them to break it down, it might actually cost us more money. So you actually realize that Lisa is monitoring this conversation, right? <laughs> <laughs> you 
are in a public forum. <laughs> she could be here. She could. So I, I don't really, I can't really quantify that unless we put more work into it, Jack. If you, I don't, and I don't that. know I just, how that would work on their end. I'm just curious at the overall thing because I saw it when 15, 20 years ago, we'd have 20, 30,000 in there and we'd always run over. And now we're starting to get progressive and figuring, anticipating up front, which is good. But, uh, you know, 34%, I'm not happy with, but I don't have any choice. So I just, I think we just got to move this. It, there are things that the town, and, and so the select board has made choices to, to fully participate in litigation in support of the committees making these decisions. Yeah. So I think we're, we're blessed that we can actually have a monthly retainer type structure that helps us with some questions because it does kind of offset what we might see in higher costs for other things. But ultimately, Jack, I don't know what next year is going to look like. It's all I can say, and this was this was a conversation Brenda and I had when we discussed this budget is all we can do is guess. We can hope it'll be within the parameters we get, but I know you guys have had, because I remember it myself, the guesstimate doesn't always meet the what actually comes through for bills. So sometimes it does require transfers. And one of the reasons that we asked for more money in October was we saw this increasing because of the, the litigation and the contract negotiations. Now contract negotiations for the police department won't start until the middle of, of FY22 is when I think I'll get a request. So that'll be probably December, January prior to the end of their current contract. Okay, thank you. Anybody else have a question or comment? I don't see any. John Baturk. Hi. Jeff Upton. I'm going to abstain. I just like to spend more time with us. Okay. Skip Olmstead. Aye. John Presky. Aye. Julie Elephant. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. All right. So that passes 601. Next. Next budget is 152-5400, and that is the personnel board for $500. So moved. Second. 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 All right, it's been moved and seconded. Personnel board, 152-5400 for $500. Any discussion? Doesn't look like it. Jim Cambius. Um, aye. John Paterk. Hi. Jeff Upton. Uh, uh, hi. Hi. John Pereski. Hi. Julia Chalfant. Hi. Allison Vanderbilt. Hi. All right, that passes 700. The next budget is 155 5400, and that's for IT hardware for $5,000. Don't move. Second. Second. All right, so it's been moved and seconded for IT hardware 155-5400 for $5,000. Any discussion? Question. We've only spent $723 through January on a $5,000 budget. Um, well, we're, we're trying to keep the expenses down as much as we possibly can, but we never know when we're going to have to replace a computer or some hardware that, that um, goes defunct on us. And in fact, that conversations come up, there's actually possibly one computer, maybe two that have to be replaced. It, the only thing that's kept me from having to do it is the fact that it isn't being used because the space itself isn't open to the public yet. So we are we do try to, to limit what we spend, particularly in the beginning of the year, because sometimes things come up towards the end of the year, like Brenda mentioned, that all of a sudden we have to scramble. 
I'm just holding it. Thank you. Any other discussion? No, John Pachurk. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. Allison Vanderbilden. Aye. Passes 700. All right, the next budget is 159-5410, and that's contracted services for $229,558. No move. Just been moved. Do we have a second? I'll second it to get it on the table. Thank you. Um, so it's been moved and seconded for contracted services 159 5410 for 229,550. Um, Casey, do you want to give us an overview? I can give you an overview. So you'll see it's increased by 14,904. There's a couple, yeah. there's, there's several things that went into this budget. First, we consolidated the network maintenance, AV backup and email into one item. And the combined cost in, pa in the past year was 21,500. But when we reviewed our annual managed services cost, we had identified key outlying factors. So one of those things is we never had email backup. And so I, not everybody knows this, but your email when it's running through a public municipal system is considered a public record. And the towns never back those emails up. And we discovered when we converted our email last year that the previous email provider wasn't backing it up. So I had a conversation with IT and it, it happened three quarters of the way through COVID, but eventually had a conversation asking them, what can we do about this? And so they said to me, look, when we go through the annual overview, we'll give you an option. So one of the increases you see here is the additional costs to back up our email. The there are also necessary cybersecurity needs that we have. And I don't know if anybody read the news, but apparently the RMV was hacked. This is the reason that we try to have, try to increase our cybersecurity software and monitoring because of those types of things. Apparently, I, I, Jennifer told me this afternoon that the RMV got hacked and they shut the system down for regular daily work. So that's one of the reasons that you put cybersecurity systems and software in place. So that's another element that was increased. Um, we also know that there are several micro, several computers are going to require upgrades. Now this happens on a staggered basis where your office suite upgrades. Microsoft only offers what they call Office 365 now. So it, it actually, it, I find it very useful, but I've used it before. When I came to work here, I realized we were still using the suite on a computer. So that's gonna be transitioning. So there's a certain number of office software upgrades that are gonna happen this year. But the main thing that was critical was reviewing in the annual review, and that's why you see this change, is we identified the fact that COVID demanded that we do things remotely, that we have secure access to our systems from the outside. So we bought a bunch of computers, we deployed them to staff so that we could keep people safe, particularly when we had to close offices and still have the availability to work. But that came with a cost because all those computers had to be monitored. All those computers needed cybersecurity Mon it needed that cybersecurity software. So it became an identified necessity through COVID. The problem that we're seeing is it doesn't seem to be going away, even to the point where the state said that they don't think it's gonna go away. So there's that outlier. 
But what it resulted in was a higher managed security cost. So we spent more time dealing with connectivity than we ever had before. That meant we deployed those people at Northeast IT to help us with our computers. There was an increase in phishing. There was an increased need to make sure that, for instance, Brenda can attend the meeting because she has her computer and her login information to get directly to her desktop is set up. That we've trouble that we've completed troubleshooting if she's had a problem, um, and and so that was a significant increase. Not all of it is seen in contracted services because some of those things we did parcel off to COVID CARES money, and other things may in fact we're going to go back and review some of those bills and see if we can push some of this some of that other support cost that's directly related to some of these laptops off to CARES Act money once we find out that FEMA is going to give us money. But the point is, is we had an increase in support needs. So the fundamental change that I asked them to help me with was the cost per hour needed to be less. And they said, well, you can't do it that way. What you can do is you can change to a task-based service system. So instead of charging us per hour to troubleshoot something with Brenda, sorry, Brenda, I'm picking on you but you're on vacation. Um, so instead of spending a per hour cost to fix the problem that Brenda might have, or a per hour cost to monitor our firewall system if there's an attack, and we've had a couple suspicious activity situations, they would do that on a task-based model as opposed to an, a per hour model. And it comes with a little bit of an increase because they're absorbing the fact that they're not gonna be able to charge per hour. On the other hand, they're dealing with a task in a way that isn't, it's gonna be a similar, sort of a similar thing as what we talked about with legal, is they're, they're not gonna hit us for every 15 minute increment. So from that perspective, I see that as a, as a benefit, um, but I can't, I can't change the fact that we do have to deal with cybersecurity. We do have to keep up with a certain model of remote, which none of us likes, but it is saving us money in weird places that we don't normally think about. And so, you know, that's, those are a couple of the main increases that happen in contracted services. The other increase was in website hosting. So I initially put through a capital improvement request for $48,000 to completely transition the website from an old platform through our web hosting group, Civic Plus, to a newer platform. And one of the reasons that I asked for that was because we found it so difficult in, this, in the, these times with COVID where we had to push everything out electronically that we could to make the platform work better for us. It's very, the platform is very old. It doesn't handle information in an organized manner and people find it very difficult to search. Even I find it difficult to search. So I put complaints. the viewers out to ask that question and we got a price back and initially it was $48,000. And then we went back and I talked to the provider and I said, look, how can we phase this over a period of time and pay for it in a way that's not gonna hit us quite as hard. And what they came back was, with was a five year spread of the transition for using a state contract. And we spread those costs, it's about $11,000 per year. That, that includes the support fee, the annual support fee. And I think it gives us a little bit more flexibility because we can make those transitions and the town can do some of the other work about uploading the information so that we can reduce and that was the point i had to say to them we need to reduce the cost what can we do on our end and so that's how we brought it down to eleven thousand dollars per year but that's what we would see is either that capital expense or spreading it out over a five-year period and blending it more thoroughly into what we need over an evolving remote landscape which is kind of what i think we're looking at um, the other increases that we saw, consulting services did increase, 
it's a result of some of our ongoing climate resiliency efforts and some of the needs for consulting services that are unanticipated. For instance, you know, when we need a particular an appraisal, for instance, that comes out of contracted services. So we left a tiny bit of money in there. There were other places that we reduced, but there are subscription fees that went up and user fees that went up. And those we can expect to go up somewhere between two and 5% on an annual basis. So that, that fluctuates, but really it was computer maintenance, the website hosting and making some adjustments to our consulting services because the past pattern has increased. Those services have increased over the past couple of years based on what Brenda and I discussed. Any questions? And question on Zoom. We pay $4,200 for the year for two accounts. We pay, I cannot remember what we paid, Brenda. We pay, so we pay two things. We pay an annual fee for certain elements of Zoom. And initially we paid for that through CARES Act. There is a monthly fee that we have to pay for, and, and I can't remember if Jennifer was here, I'm sorry, I didn't even think to ask her. It, it's, it, um, it, it was running about 210, but I think you had, it, had to add an account on an occasional base, basis. So it's, I think it's been at 256 per month lately. Per month. Yeah. And then we did an annual upcharge. So when we first got the Zoom, we did it annually and we charged it off to the CARES Act. So we're not sure what this is gonna look like as things move forward. Right now, we actually need, we were talking about it in here, we could use a third account for a short, probably three month period because the uptick in meetings has been significant. There's one way to solve that problem. We could have the select board open up the town hall. That is that is a comment that that I have heard made several times. Okay, that's all I have, thank you. Any other questions or discussion? Now that it's clear as mud, it's my favorite saying right now. So there's an FCAT fund that covers equipment or something, right? So there is. We used to have a PEG access revolving fund or re special revenue fund, but DOR told us we had to either change to an enterprise fund or take it into the general fund. And we chose to take it into the general fund. So all revenues go through the general fund and the expenditure is now showing up through contracted services. <clears throat> How much do we bring in? Uh, I wanna say mm, 100,000, uh, I can't tell you what exactly, but it's more than what we pay FCAT for. Now, that's a that's a re revenue fund as opposed to the general fund. No, it's in the general fund. Okay. It's a it's a local receipt. Okay. Mm -hmm. Julie, do you mind if I ask Brenda a question? Go ahead. Um, so Julie asked a question a minute ago. There is something related to FCAT. Brenda, can you clarify for me? There's a tech, isn't there a technology a account so, that FCAT was going to use for upgrades? Is that what I'm remembering? So when we receive money for that, uh, we receive an additional amount for capital. Okay. And, and we have a specific account, which we voted earlier, that is for just PEG access capital. Okay. Yep. And they carry that over from year to year until they use it all. And so that may come up. There was actually a couple of items that we asked FCAT to pay for that were part of our, our onboarding to this different remote participation model. And actually Trevor uses it quite a bit as we bought those big um, boards. Uh, I forget what they call them. Anybody with children knows what those are, but I don't have children, so I can't remember. Anyway, they're working boards where you can do various types of AV um, 
functions. So we bought a couple of those because we anticipate and anticipated it. We use them now. The need to actually be able to see more people and use that functionality through FCAP. Um, so they paid for one, we paid for another. And some of the stuff, like, again, some of the stuff went through CARES Act, but we're, we're drilling down to the bottom of our CARES Act money and we still have not heard from FEMA. So we don't know how much FEMA is gonna pay for, so I've really put the kibosh on, on spending as much as I can until we have a definitive answer from FEMA. Thanks. Any other questions or discussion on this item? The um, Casey, the COVID expense account one five twelve fifty five hundred mm -hmm. is way overspent per the financial statement compared to the twenty twenty one budget. Isn't that interesting? Um, <laughs> you want you want me to answer that? Yes, please. Well, I, you know, you brought it up a second ago. I'm just wondering how we're going to handle it if we so, don't get the money. So, John, we received four hundred and forty-four thousand five hundred and forty-two dollars for the CARES Act, which is sitting in a special yeah. revenue fund. I okay. have left all of the expenditures in that um, five one twelve fifty-five hundred account because we still don't know how much FEMA is paying. Right. So Sitting. rather than move it all out and then have to jockey it around, I wanna wait till we know what we're getting from FEMA. So it's my fault. Um, I've been hanging on to it there until we know, but those expenditures should all be covered. Okay, thank you. Sure. Any other questions? I just want to clarify for John that the CARES Act money was extended till this coming December. So we have plenty of time to cover our expenses. And it was important to get reimbursement from FEMA. And that has increased, normally they pay 75%. That has increased to 100%. It's just that they're slow in processing the claims. And then, then we'll know how much is left over from the CARES Act. And we'll, we certainly will cover as much as we can with that remaining fund. And then that's when you're gonna open up the town hall. Say that again, Jack. <laughs> and that's when you're gonna open up the town hall when you run out of money. <laughs> John, as soon as the variants are under control, I have, I'm have very happy to report that 48.2% of the residents in Deerfield have been now vaccinated. And so it's very, very exciting. According to Good, the state- Congratulations. So we're very thrilled and um, we're hoping to keep increasing that number. And yes, once we get everything under control, we will open the town hall. Keeping the town operations operating and without interruption has been the number one goal. And we have been achieving that. Thank you. All right, any other discussion on this budget item? <laughs> Doesn't look like it, all right. Eric. Hi. Jeff Upton. Hi. Skip Olmstead. Hi. Don Pareski. Hi. Jim Cambius. Hi. Julie Chalfin. Hi. Allison Vandervelden. Hi. All right. 700. Zero, zero. All right. The next budget is 172-5400. And that's the open space committee for twenty thousand dollars. I'll move. Did I hear a second? I don't think I heard a second. I'll second that. Um, so we have a move and second for open space committee one seventy two fifty four hundred for twenty thousand dollars. So I found out not too long ago that our open space and recreation plan. <laughs> had expired literally in February. That's a plan that is used for through the point system that the state grants utilize by and large. And towns are being evaluated for grant applications. And 
I reached out to try to get some idea of how much time and how much it would cost us to do this. What you see in that $20,000 is a request for the full funding to complete an OSRP refresh. Sorry, it's a, I use acronyms a lot. Open space and recreation plan up, update in a year's time. And it's a multi representative process. So agriculture, recreation, conservation, planning, the select board, some key public safety elements get involved. And it really, you're trying to identify key changes that have happened in the last six years or five years that might change your approach to open space and recreation in town. Generally, we need assistance through a local planning agency because the process is very quantified from the state level and they help you literally go through each step because this is what they do. So some of that $20,000 might help us pay for that. It, it, they would help us with it, assuming they have the capacity to do this. But the quote of $20,000 is intended to complete the plan in a year. It doesn't have to be done that way. You could spread it over two years and identify 10,000 and 10,000. But I'm afraid, and I mentioned this to the select board individually, I'm afraid if we don't do this as soon, sooner rather than later, it could affect our grant, our grant applications in the next two years. So that's the caveat. You guys can tell, you know, the select board can also say, hey, Make that 10. Um, but I do think it will have an impact on our how we compete for grants. And right now, there's a lot of projects that grants grants are going to be a factor in. I totally agree with Casey. Who are you? And what have you done with Jack? <laughs> Don't worry, I'll get to you. I know it's coming. Any other comments? Carolyn, you unmuted. You got something to say? <laughs> uh, I was just going to say that I. It is very. Um, Casey is absolutely correct, and we will get our money back on this. I'm sure in the grant cycles. You won't see it as a direct response, but we will make that back in terms of how we compete better for grants. Yeah. So if, if I could quickly, what would you anticipate the budget would be for next year? If we were able to complete this in a year, Skip, I would see this drop back, drop back down to what Brenda tells me it should be. Two hundred and fifty dollars. Should have seen the last couple of years, so. 500, I went, how much was it, Brenda, 250? Yeah. 250 for the last 25 years. Exactly. <laughs> so the only thing I can think of that might be necessary we, in Ashfield when we did this process, we added a little bit of money to pay for additional copies of the open space and rec plan to be published and a couple of the maps. So I think that amounted to about $300, Skip. So maybe we would see it drop to three hundred dollars. Yeah, I, I wonder. I wonder if the reserve fund might not be a more appropriate vehicle for funding this. But that's a, just a comment. And and start it now. Is that what you're thinking? I I'm not thinking. It was just you know. It's, well, if we did that, we could maybe reduce it. I don't know. I would need to find out in terms of time frame how long it would take the cog to ramp this up. When I say it's a multi a multi representative process, you got to get people on board. Sometimes it takes a couple months to get people to show up because it's one more meeting that people have to go to and they may not want it. That was the biggest problem I had in Ashfield with this. But if we get a fundamentally interested group, it can move along in a year and a half. That was, they had a two-year process. So, but you have to go through certain hearings and evaluate sections of the chapters of your, your plan 
and determine where you want to be with things. So if you wanted to knock it down and do it over two years, it's just going to take us longer and we can lose points on some of these applications that we apply for. I, I kind of like Skip's idea. This is Jeff speaking. I kind of like Skip's idea because the sooner we leverage this $20,000, the better off we will be for grants and applying for the various grants. So you would prefer that I, let me just make sure I'm clear on this. You'd prefer me to put through a request for $10,000 for open space and rec to start that process now? I think it was I, just the opposite. I think that... And reduce next year's budget by to 10? I think it's something to think about. I, you know, I wouldn't make that decision, you know, on the conversation that we've had tonight. You know, we can vote this. That doesn't mean we can't go back and do something different. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to write myself a note. Yeah. So we tabled the police budget to come back to later once we had all the other budgets sort of in hand. Um, do we feel ready to vote this tonight? Um, good question. This is a good deal for the town of Deerfield. Yeah. So I think my feeling is that everybody agrees that it needs to be done. Uh, the, the vibe I'm getting from people speaking up is that maybe it needs to be start now, later. Um, I would propose, um, and I would, depending how the rest of the committee feels, but I would propose approving this, and and then if if it happens that we decide to approve a reserve fund transfer to cover half of it before the new fiscal year, I feel more comfortable decreasing that budget at at the last minute than increasing it at the last minute. So I would rather vote it at twenty thousand now. Um, and come back to it if we do decide. I mean, the new fiscal year is going to be here in the blink of an eye. So I would propose that we vote it. Um, I and then any other discussion? I'd rather vote the whole twenty thousand now. Anybody else? I, I think, Julie, there'll be a couple of budgets we'll have to revisit, like the debt budget and the uh, interest on debt. And so this might be one that we will have to revisit if, in fact, Casey can get somewhere down the road with it now. But um, if you did want to vote it now, I can certainly put it on a tickler list for us to look at later. All right, so we have moved and seconded Open Space Committee 172-5400 for $20,000. Any further discussion? No. John Turk. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Skip Olmstead. I'm going to abstain. John Pareski. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin, I. Allison Mandeville. I. That passes 601. What's next on our list? I believe that is the Board of Health budget 512 5110. Board of we want 192.5430. Oh, is that a town zero? Expense? Yeah, town I'm office old. expense. 192. Town, yeah, town office expense is next. 192 yes. 5430. Say the number again, uh, please. Excuse me, $13,250. What's the account again, please? 192 5430. Thank you. Sure. We have a motion. Uh, 
Um, make a motion to approve this budget, 192.54.30 at 13,250. We have a second. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded for town office expense, 192.54.30 at $13,250. Any discussion? All right, roll call vote. Jim Cambius. Aye. John Paterk. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Julia Chalfant. Aye. Alex Aye. All right. Seven zero zero. Passes. All right. The next budget is uh, Board of Health salaries 512-5110. And the amount of that is $38,242. Make a motion to approve Board of Health salaries count 512-5110 for $38,242. Second. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Now, roll call vote. Jim Cambius. Aye. John Paterk. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Julie Chalfant. Aye. Allison Vanderbellen. Aye. All right, that passes 700. The next budget is uh, Board of Health Expense 512-5400. For $33,525. I'll move. Seconded. It's been moved and seconded for Board of Health Expense. Any discussion? Um, I would just like to add that we are um, adding a line item, um, um, a social worker line item, but uh, I'm hoping between uh, being able to bill insurance and COVID. Uh, potential money coming into the town that there will be no impact on the total budget. Just, you know, trying to be very transparent that we're trying to do this. So, Carolyn, you're thinking that ARPA is going to pay for that, or, or what is your thought? Well, I think. Um, uh, some of the some of the money it's it's clear that some of some of it will be qualified under COVID, and I'm hoping that that will front us a little bit of money, but um, also that you, we can bill for insurance um, under you know services um, that would be provided. So I, I, we're we're still working on this. Um, this is indeed, um, so I would just hope that people would support. The budget, current budget that we're saying, and that when we have this sorted out in the next two or three weeks, um, this might be come up for discussion again. Okay. Clarify it for everybody. I don't have enough information on, you know, talking back and forth with our insurance carrier, stuff like that. Certain things are covered under municipal activities, normal municipal activities, things like that. So I'm we're trying to make sure that there's no additional costs involved or, or very little additional costs. Could we table it to was... find out? Pardon me, John? Should we table this voting this till you find out more? Well, um, if you want to, or if you, I mean, I would prefer just go ahead and that I, you know, when we get the information, I can add it to the budget and we can review it then. Question. Are any of the nurses costs covered by um, insurance? No, this is public health nurse, nursing costs. We, um, some, of the, some of the expenses have been covered by COVID, but this is our normal um, public health nurse. Yeah. Um, yeah. That does, you know, uh, seniors follow up for seniors or follow up from anyone that comes out of the hospital. Um, you know, it's eight, about approximately eight hours a week. It's our general nursing services. Yeah. Well, you know, blood, 
does blood pressure, follow up on medication. If, if, if someone has a questions on medication or has messed up on the medication and needs help with that, um, you know, kind of. It, it covers just about everything. It's also why it's so important, Julie, is if we have a TB case, um, you know, someone has to, um, you know, make sure that the medicine is and, and treatment is followed up every day, sometimes twice a day. Um, if there's um, reportable cases of information, I mean, I'm on Maven and I, I use the, you know, the system, the state system. But when we have reportable diseases like, you know, um, tick, tick-borne diseases and stuff, you know, uh, things that are entered into the system, though, though, and uh, or Pekuskas needs follow-up, then she does that. So I wasn't arguing the need for her by any means. Oh, oh. I just was um, wondering no, you can't that, really that the social worker might be covered by insurance, whether than just for my own information. Yeah. Question. Question. Go ahead, Jeff. Uh, Carolyn, is this a position that's being planned to carry forward uh, beyond the one-year period here? Um, we're going to see how it works, Jeff. I'm, it's just um, I handled the tracing when you know cases that um, were not able to be followed up on right away or were problematic, and I'm just more of aware of things that are happening in the community because of COVID. And, yeah. um, uh, and, and there were several people that made compelling arguments and, and really compelling arguments that we need some kind of outreach program in our community. And I, I'm, I'm agreeing. We're just trying to figure out how we, how it would not have a financial impact on the town per se, because I mean, where everyone's aware, you, you, you know, we're not in a position to hire additional staff. We're not in a position to hire, have new programs, stuff like that. And also there's a huge, huge demand. So we're trying to figure out how to, how to accomplish that. And I, and I, I, yeah. I feel like it's important. Oh, thank you. I appreciate, appreciate the information. Any other questions or discussions? Annalie? Yes, I'll just mention that um, I have worked with Carolyn and some of the um, residents who have been behind this position. Um, we've also been talking with the chief of police, the senior center, uh, the school superintendent, school counselors, they all are supportive of the position. Um, and as Carolyn is saying, it would help a lot with some of the frequent flyers, the mental health cases that the police are overburdened with right now, um, seniors helping them with placement, both in and out of facilities, um, helping the school, both the senior, the, the school resource officer, as well as the counselors with some um, initial uh, crisis intervention and trying to find um, counselors. It's been incredibly difficult for parents to find counselors um, the mental health needs, as Carolyn is saying, um, we've all heard on the radio and reading in the news about COVID, just ripple effects of mental health. And so we're trying to, as much as possible, get ahead of that. And um, uh, in, in, in answer to your question, definitely see how we can support it with grants as well as with individual billing and see how it goes for the, the next year or two. And, and we'll, fluid position but it's not actually on the budget yet so um john Pichur, go ahead yes uh, the only question i got is don't we have one of these positions at the senior center right now i thought we had three people there and that was one of the positions over there so are we going to hire a second one in addition to that no, we're trying, we're trying to incorporate um, what is offered at the senior center now, which is vacant and, um, and, and try to expand it somewhat. Can I just interject here? We don't have a number that we can work with at the moment. So it would seem like it would make sense to go ahead and, and take whatever we've got on the budget uh, and do one of two things, vote what we've got here, and then if we need to come back and 
when you're when you have more information, we can do that or table it. One of those two, and then uh, move on with the with the budgeting process. Um, because this budget is very important, I would hope that you would vote it, and that whatever changes we make to this budget, we we would come back to you. Any further discussion? Okay, so we have a motion and a second for Board of Health expense 512-5400 for $33,525, which we have all commented does not include a social worker, which may be coming in the future. Yes, it does come, we will come back and revisit this. Any further discussion? No, all righty. Um, John Patrick. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Kip Olmstead. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julia Chalfin. Aye. Allison Vanderbilt. Aye. All right. That passes 700. All right. The next budget is 512 5500, and that's for our COVID expenses, um, which quite frankly, is a shot in the dark, but uh, we, we put something in there to have, um, I don't know, Casey, you wanna? It is a shot in the dark. We've identified the fact that it, we don't always know when an expense is gonna present itself because often it's situational. So we initially put in 9,500, I think it was 9,500 this 80, year. 8,521. 8, yeah. Um, this year, and we still think we're gonna to need to use that. It's just, we're trying to balance what FEMA might give us with what CARES Act already, we already have in CARES Act funds and additional things that may come up. Costs for town meeting may get allocated through here. Um, if we have an additional, because costs for town meeting have ballooned because we have to do town meeting in a specific way so there are things that may not fit into CARES Act or into other funding programs that are coming down from the federal government. So we felt like we needed to have a bit of a cushion here because some of these expenses can be fairly high. We do expect the probability is that we will be reimbursed for these expenses. I, no guarantees, but Okay. We're preparing. So many towns put together a COVID expense account like we did last year. And different towns approach the federal funding opportunities in different ways. We actually approach the CARES Act funds from the perspective of outlining estimates of what we thought we could expect for different categories and asking for the full amount. Other towns didn't do that. And so we saw some, some problems when it came to unanticipated costs, whether it was a town cost or a school cost. So one of the reasons that this appropriation exists is because at some point that federal funding may go away and we may have to continue to pay for outlying issue, outlying things. So we took a best guess knowing that our expenses had increased over the past year. That's why you see the additional 6,500 because things have increased we're trying to maintain things, the, some of these costs, if not as many as we can through our grant funds. But when that's done, if we still have COVID impacts that we have to pay for, then we need to have an account for that. I just wanna say we've been extremely careful in the fact that any COVID expense, we've tried to cover it under either the CARES Act or the FEMA submission. So we're not out there spending money randomly without any um, consideration. And we do anticipate, you know, 1.2 million or more from the federal government still coming in, but there are huge expenses that um, we are faced with like through the schools and stuff like that. So it will, um, the money will get eaten up, but it has helped us tremendously this year. And that has kept us from having huge um, budget, budget deficits. And so I mentioned categories. There were categories that the state gave us to fit within the CARES Act money. And there were categories that FEMA gave us that our submission requests for reimbursement for FEMA had to fit within those categories. Some of the expenses we saw 
don't necessarily fit within a box, which is initially why we thought this would be a small appropriation would be what could be used, but it's turned into more and more things are being questioned, particularly with FEMA, because they've been very, they changed the percentage that they will pay. They haven't changed the box that your little expense has to fit in. So we think that some of these expenses are gonna have, we are gonna have to pay for some of these things out of appropriation. So we're anticipating between now and the end of next fiscal year that possibly continuing to happen. I'll move account number five, twelve, fifty-five hundred for the amount of fifteen thousand dollars. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I don't see any. Jim Cambius. Aye. John Paturic. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Julie Chalfant, aye. Alice Kinsman, aye. That passes seven zero zero. Do we All have right, to be right. off this call by by seven? Is there another meeting following us? There, there is a uh, an assessors meeting tonight, so I assume so. But okay. Um, well, we only have one left. We can probably handle it. Right. So it's it's nine ten dash fifty eight hundred. And it's for the unfunded vacation sick leave reserve for ten thousand dollars. What tab is it under? Eight. What tab is it under, Brenda? Uh, it's nine. under eight. <laughs> I've got it under nine. <laughs> nine. I only have one thing in the eight. Okay. <laughs> so was there a motion on that? There is. Yeah. We need a second. Second. All right. Discussion? Yeah. Go ahead, John. We spent we spent thirteen thousand dollars through January. Is that pretty much gonna do it for the year? Well, I sure hope or are so. Are we gonna go are we gonna go over budget? Uh, we don't intend to go over budget. That was uh, when we budgeted for that, we knew we had one person retiring that had been with us for 35 years. So we had figured what we would be paying him and budgeted accordingly. Um, in fiscal 22, I don't know that we have anybody retiring. I suppose we could. So therefore the $10,000 to cover anybody that might be. But she said. Thank you. Any further discussion? All right. Uh, roll call vote. Jim Cambius. Aye. John Paturk. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. Pareski. Aye. Julia Chalfant. Aye. Allison Mandeboven. Aye. Passes seven zero zero. Okay, we're set, so, right? So that was all that we had on our list for tonight. We still had um, the wastewater treatment plant debt that we needed to look at, but I understand that there might be some changes in what we need to do for that. So let's just hold off with that one until the next the next meeting. You read your email. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Julie, if you're looking for a motion, I'll be more than willing to make it. All right. our next meeting. Julie, we have, have we date for our next meeting? Have we April a specific date for our next meeting? Yeah, April 20th at 5 p.m. Yep. Okay. Two weeks from tonight. Right. Just so to we make have, sure. yep. So next Tuesday. Right. Whatever that is, the 13th, 13th. We, we have a meeting posted, but that will just be listened to that public hearing. We have a yep. meeting on the 20th, and then the 21st will be the library presentation at the select board meeting, all of which we are welcome to attend, as always. Um, we have a motion and a second, I believe, to adjourn. Any further discussion? 
I just want to say thank you again, Julie, for being gracious and allowing us to vote our um, letter. Um, I don't want to be a, a secret. Oh, I just want to make sure that if the select board, because they never adjourn, so I know. Well, I think we lost probably. a member, so we can't adjourn. Oh. Okay. They're, they're yeah. always doing something anyway, so they might as well stay in session. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Jim Cambius. Uh, John Paturic. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. Foresky. Aye. Julie Chop and I, Allison Vanderbilt. Aye. All right. We are adjourned at 6.53 p.m. Right. Thank you. The is also <laughs> adjourning. <laughs> yes. Thank you, oh, thank the thank member. you for everybody. Good Thanks night, so everybody. Much. All right. Thank, thank you. you.